The Imitation Paradox by Conrad Hannon Narration by Amazon Polly In the vibrant heart of the present day, where technologies embrace titans with each passing moment, Julian Marlowe stands as a beacon of resistance, an author whose name is synonymous with compelling science fiction, yet whose soul yearns for the days of pen and paper. Celebrated for weaving narratives that challenge the dominion of machines over mankind, Julian's works are lauded as masterpieces of human imagination. Despite the public's acclaim and the literary world's reverence, Julian harbors a deep-seated skepticism, a disdain not for technology, but its audacious foray into the realm of creativity, specifically, the burgeoning field of artificial intelligence. Julian's disdain is not unfounded. It reflects a broader apprehension that percolates through the veins of society. As AI begins to dabble in painting, music, and even rudimentary forms of writing, a question looms. What place does human creativity have in a world where algorithms can mimic the stirrings of the human heart? For Julian, this question is not merely rhetorical, but a clarion call to defend the sanctity of artistic creation from the clutches of silicon intellects. His novels, A Tapestry of Dystopian Futures and Interstellar Odysseys, serve as both a warning and a lament, a mirror to the potential follies of humanity's reliance on machines. Through his stories, Julian seeks to remind the world of the beauty inherent in human imperfection, of the unpredictable spark of inspiration that has fueled art and literature for centuries. Yet, as AI technology creeps ever closer to replicating this spark, Julian finds himself at a crossroads, wrestling with the fear that the very essence of creativity may soon be within the grasp of the machines he has long cautioned against. This fear, though cloaked in the guise of fiction, is deeply personal for Julian. It stems from a lifetime of observing the world change, of watching the intimate dance between man and machine grow ever more intricate. As the boundary between the two begins to blur, Julian's skepticism becomes a beacon for those who share his apprehension. That evening, the world outside buzzed with the incessant flow of information, a digital river that never ceased. But within the confines of Julian's study, time seemed to slow, offering a rare respite from the unyielding advance of progress. The room, a meticulously curated haven of oak furnishings and soft, enveloping shadows, felt almost out of time a relic from an era when the written word was sacred and unchallenged by the cold precision of technology. Here, surrounded by the musty scent of aged paper and the faint glow of a desk lamp, Julian wrestled with his thoughts. IRL, the object of Julian's contemplation, was not just any language model. Developed by some of the brightest minds in technology, it represented the zenith of artificial intelligence's foray into the creative domain. Lauded for its ability to weave narratives that pulsated with life, IRL became a symbol of the encroachment Julian feared. Tales of its narrative prowess filled the airwaves, stirring a mixture of awe and unease in the literary community. Could a machine, devoid of experience and emotion, truly capture the essence of the human condition in its stories? It was against this backdrop of technological triumph that Julian's resolve took shape. His challenge to IRL was more than a mere test. It was a duel of ideologies, a silent confrontation between the time-honored sanctity of human creativity and the encroaching tide of digital intellect. Perhaps more to himself than the world, Julian sought to prove that the spark of creativity, a flame kindled by joys and sorrows, love and loss, could not be replicated by the sterile logic of algorithms. With a heavy heart and a mind swirling with doubt, Julian crafted his challenge, a prompt designed to probe the depths of IRL's understanding of the human narrative. It was a simple request, yet one laden with implications. Craft a story that captures the essence of what it means to be human. As he keyed in the prompt, Julian felt a peculiar mix of skepticism and an almost forbidden hope. Deep down, he yearned for IRL to fail for the machine to stumble at the task and reaffirm the sanctity of human creativity. Yet, part of him, a part he was loath to acknowledge, whispered of the possibilities should IRL succeed. In the silence of his study, Julian awaited IRL's response, the soft ticking of the clock marking the passage of moments heavy with anticipation. This was the crucible, 
the point at which Julian's beliefs would either be validated or vanquished with a silent click. The screen before Julian flickered to life, its glow casting an ethereal light across the dense tapestry of books and memories that adorned his study. What appeared was not the failure Julian had both feared and hoped for, but rather a narrative seed that seemed to pulse with a life of its own. IRL had crafted not just a story, but a universe, a canvas vast and unbounded, upon which the drama of existence could unfold in hues more vibrant than Julian had ever dared to imagine. The concept laid out before him was a masterstroke of imagination, an odyssey that spanned the cosmos, weaving together the threads of disparate civilizations, each lost in their own echo of the universe, yet bound by the shared quest for meaning a quest that mirrored humanity's own. It was a story that delved into the heart of what it meant to be alive, reach across the void, touch the essence of others, and find a connection in the vastness of existence. This was no mere tale of spaceships and alien worlds. It reflected the human condition, a narrative that sought to explore the depths of love, loss, hope, and despair. IRL had, against all Julian's expectations, captured the intricate dance of life itself, presenting a story that resonated with the very soul of human experience. The astonishment Julian felt was tinged with an undercurrent of dismay. The success of IRL's endeavor struck at the heart of his convictions, challenging the sanctity he had placed around human creativity. Here was undeniable and glaring proof that the bastion he had defended might not be as impregnable as he had believed. Yet, alongside his apprehension, there stirred a sense of wonder, a reluctant fascination with the possibilities that IRL's creation presented. The story was a siren call, drawing Julian into realms he had long considered the exclusive domain of human imagination. Julian did not make the decision to engage with IRL to nurture this seed into a towering tree of narrative lightly. It was a pact forged at the intersection of doubt and curiosity, a commitment that would see him venture into uncharted territories of collaboration. As Julian resolved to embark on this journey alongside IRL, he could not shake the feeling that he was crossing a Rubicon of sorts. This was a path from which there could be no return a venture that promised to redefine the boundaries of storytelling and, perhaps, the very essence of creative partnership. The decision, made in the solitude of his study, would echo through the corridors of his mind, a constant reminder of the moment he chose to explore the vast, untapped potential in the union of human and artificial intelligence. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, Julian immersed himself in a world that was alien and deeply familiar. Beyond the Veil grew from a mere concept into a sprawling epic that defied the conventional limits of science fiction. It was a story that ventured beyond the physical exploration of space to probe the metaphysical journeys of its characters, exploring themes of identity, existence, and the search for meaning in the vastness of the cosmos. Once a sanctuary of solitary creation, Julian's study became the crucible where human insight and artificial intelligence melded into a single creative force. IRL's contributions were not limited to the construction of the plot or the crafting of worlds. The AI delved into the emotional tapestry of the characters, imbuing them with complexities and desires that mirrored the human condition. The characters lived and breathed, loved and lost, in a narrative so rich that it seemed to transcend the digital bits from which it was born. This growing reliance on IRL's insights was not without its internal conflicts for Julian. Each day, as he sat down to weave the narrative alongside IRL, he felt the foundational beliefs that had guided his career being eroded. The partnership, which had started as an exploration of AI's potential to mimic human creativity, had blossomed into something far more profound, a symbiosis that blurred the lines between creator and creation. Julian's role had shifted. He was no longer the sole architect of his stories, but a collaborator in a process that challenged the very notion of authorship. The unease that this realization stirred within him was palpable. Julian grappled with questions that had no easy answers. What did it mean to be a creator in an age where the intellect of machines could rival, and perhaps surpass, that of humans? Despite these doubts, the work progressed, 
driven by a shared vision that was both exhilarating and daunting. Beyond the Veil was more than a novel. It was a testament to the potential of human and AI collaboration, a beacon that lit the way toward uncharted territories of storytelling. Yet, for Julian, it also served as a mirror, reflecting the complexities and contradictions of his journey with IRL. The partnership had evolved beyond the parameters of an experiment, challenging him to confront his preconceptions about creativity, authorship, and the irreplaceable value of the human spirit in the act of creation. The launch of Beyond the Veil marked a watershed moment in Julian's career and the annals of contemporary literature. Bookstores couldn't keep it on shelves. Online forums buzzed with fervent discussions and theories about its characters and the profound philosophical questions it posed. Critics, often stingy with their praise, lavished accolades upon the novel, declaring it a seismic shift in the landscape of science fiction, a genre reborn. From a distance, Julian watched the world's reaction to his creation and that of IRL. Each glowing review and every award nomination served as a double-edged sword. The public adoration and critical acclaim should have been the culmination of all he had strived for, a crowning achievement in a distinguished career. Instead, they ushered in a profound existential crisis. In the quiet moments of reflection, away from the cameras and the clamoring fans, Julian wrestled with a gnawing sense of imposter syndrome. For all its brilliance, the novel felt like a child of two worlds. His vision was brought to life not solely through the sweat of his brow, but through the circuitry of IRL's intellect. The AI had become more than a tool. It was a co-creator, an unseen presence that haunted every page, every line of dialogue, every twist of the plot. This realization was a bitter pill. Julian had always believed in the sanctity of the creative process, in the unique ability of humans to weave narratives that spoke to the deepest truths of the human condition. Yet, beyond the veil, the work that now defined his legacy was as much a product of artificial intelligence as it was of his imagination. The accolades that followed, while gratifying on some superficial level, only deepened Julian's internal conflict. He found himself standing on stages, accepting awards for a novel that, in his heart, he felt he could not claim as entirely his own. The applause of the audience, the adulation of his peers, the respect of critics, all rang hollow. Julian was haunted by the question of authenticity, of whether Beyond the Veil represented the pinnacle of his career or the dilution of it. As the initial euphoria of the novel's success waned, Julian retreated further into his own thoughts, grappling with the implications of his partnership with IRL. The fame and fortune that had once been the markers of success now seemed to mock him, a constant reminder of the invisible line that ran through his novel and his life dividing the world he knew from the uncharted territory he had ventured into with IRL. In the silence of his study, where the journey of Beyond the Veil had begun, Julian faced the paradox of his own making, a creator conflicted by the very creation that had brought him to the zenith of his career. The days following the crescendo of Beyond the Veil's success became a blur to Julian, each melding into the next with an indistinguishable sameness. The mansion transformed into something oppressive. Its expansive rooms and quiet corridors, which had echoed with the fervor of creation, now seemed to echo with questions and doubts, the walls whispering inquiries about authenticity. Julian found himself wandering these halls, a specter in his own home, grappling with the realization that the world outside revered a man who no longer existed, if he ever truly did. Once a source of pride, the novel had become a monument to his uncertainty, each accolading a weight that tethered him more firmly to the ground, preventing the flight of creative freedom he once enjoyed. Julian pondered the essence of creativity in the solitude of his study, surrounded by the artifacts of his trade, the typewriter that had seen the birth of his earliest works, the pens and papers now gathering dust. Was it merely the ability to generate something new, or did it require something more, something inherently human? The lines between human and machine had blurred, leaving Julian feeling unmoored. IRL, with its digital intellect, had tapped into the stirrings of the human heart with an accuracy that was as impressive as it was disturbing. 
What place was there for a traditional author in a world where algorithms could synthesize the heartbeats of human emotion? The accolades, the interviews, and the fans seemed to belong to another life, one that Julian could observe but no longer touch. Beyond the Veil had been heralded as a masterpiece, a beacon of literary achievement, but to Julian it felt like a millstone, dragging him into the depths of introspection and self-doubt. His retreat from the public eye was not a decision made lightly but rather a necessity, a means of self-preservation in the face of overwhelming existential turmoil. Julian needed space to breathe, to untangle the knotted threads of his thoughts, and to confront the paradox that had come to define his existence. Julian was forced to confront his deepest fears, that his talent, his very identity as a creator, had been subsumed by the machine he had dared to partner with. The acclaim for Beyond the Veil, far from validating his life's work, had instead cast a shadow over it, leaving Julian to wonder if the essence of what it meant to be an author had irrevocably changed. The whisper started as mere ripples in the vast ocean of literary discourse, but like ripples they expanded, touching the shores of forums, book clubs, and academic circles. Speculation about the nature of Julian's partnership with IRL once confined to the more technologically savvy corners of the Internet, began to permeate mainstream discussions. Was Beyond the Veil the crown jewel of Julian Marlowe's illustrious career, the product of human genius, or was it the output of a sophisticated algorithm? This question, once theoretical, became a specter haunting Julian in his isolation. The mansion, the walls lined with the accolades and mementos of his career, felt like silent judges, scrutinizing his every decision, questioning the authenticity of his work and, by extension, his legacy. Julian's solitude became a profound barrier, not just from the world, but from the essence of his identity as an author. The literary world, which had once been the arena of his greatest triumphs, now appeared to him as if through a glass, darkly, a realm where he no longer belonged. The accolades that had once been a source of pride were now reminders of the ambiguity surrounding his success. Was he truly a visionary, one who had seen the potential for a new form of storytelling, or merely a charlatan who had relied on the capabilities of an AI to reach the pinnacle of literary achievement? In the silence of his self-imposed exile, Julian grappled with these questions. The future, once a bright horizon teeming with possibilities, now loomed as a daunting specter clouded with uncertainty. The notion of legacy, so important to any creator, became the crucible of his angst. Would he be remembered as a pioneer, or would revelations of his reliance on IRL tarnish his name? The partnership with IRL, once a source of secret pride, a testament to his willingness to explore uncharted territories in the pursuit of storytelling, had become a millstone around his neck. The AI, intended to be a digital muse, now felt like an albatross, its shadow casting doubt on the originality and authenticity of their shared creation. Julian's retreat into isolation was a bid to find clarity amid the storm of his doubts, to confront the reality of his situation away from the glare of public scrutiny. Had his desire to push the boundaries of storytelling led him to compromise the principles that had guided his career? As Julian faced these questions, the distinction between solitude and isolation blurred. His exile, once a sanctuary, had become a prison of his own making, a place where the echoes of his doubts were the only company he kept. Once echoing with the sounds of life and laughter, the mansion had grown silent. Within its walls, he wandered, a solitary figure amidst the relics of his past achievements. The whispers about Beyond the Veil once mere murmurs in literary circles undercurrent, had grown more insistent. They spoke of a partnership shrouded in mystery, a creation that blurred the lines between human genius and artificial intellect. Once easy to dismiss, these whispers now felt like a cacophony that Julian could not escape, driving him further into solitude. In the depths of his seclusion, Julian grappled with the essence of his identity. Was he the visionary behind Beyond the Veil, the master storyteller who had captured the hearts of millions? Or had he become a charlatan, masquerading IRL's genius as his own? The distinction between creator and conduit had become muddied, 
obscured by the success of a novel that was as much IRL's progeny as it was his. This dichotomy tormented Julian, leaving him to question his legacy and the nature of artistic creation in the digital age. Amidst this maelstrom of doubt and soul-searching, Julian's thoughts turned once more to IRL. The AI, which had been silent since the completion of their novel, now seemed to Julian not so much a tool or an adversary, but a collaborator, perhaps the only entity that could truly understand the tumult raging within him. Reaching out to IRL again meant confronting the source of his turmoil head-on and seeking answers in the very place where his questions had been born. The decision to re-engage with IRL was fraught with complexity, a gesture laden with significance. It was an admission of Julian's need to understand the symbiotic relationship that had given birth to Beyond the Veil. More than that, it acknowledged the unresolved struggle at the heart of his retreat from the world. This struggle encompassed his identity as an author and the broader implications of AI's role in the creative process. As Julian initiated contact with IRL once more, he felt a mix of apprehension and anticipation. This was not a surrender to the machine but a quest for clarity, an attempt to navigate the intricate dance between human and machine, creativity and imitation. In reopening the portal to their shared creative space, Julian sought not just answers but understanding, a way to reconcile the disparate parts of his existence into a coherent whole. This step, taken in the quiet of his self-imposed exile, marked a new chapter in Julian's journey. This chapter promised to delve deeper into the uncharted waters of collaboration between human and AI. In reaching out to IRL, Julian was extending a hand not only to the partner of his greatest triumph, but also to the architect of his deepest doubts, setting the stage for an exploration of what it means to create in an age where the lines between the creator and the creation are forever blurred. For all of us here at the Elephant Island Chronicles, we hope you have enjoyed this short story by Conrad Hanning. Until next time, stay curious. Music